So the Google self-driving car, uh, it was the Lexus. It was the big one, not the little one without pedals and steering wheel. So there was a driver behind the wheel. Um, struck a, a bus in California on Valentine's Day. It was in Mountain View. It was on the city streets. Um, it was an interesting situation, and it's kind of an interesting, uh, you know, test of the software. Mm. So they're coming up to a red light, and the car uh, wants to make a right turn. So as it would, it's instructed to, it gets in the f as far right as it can, so it can make the right turn. But then there's a storm drain with sandbags around it in that lane. So the car correctly senses the storm drain and the sandbags and stops. Now the light turns green. The car is stuck behind stymied. So it's going to pull around the sandbags and get into the next lane over. Unfortunately, that lane occupied by a city bus. Uh, the vehicle's operator saw the bus approaching, but, quote, believed the bus would stop or allow the Google Autonomous Vehicle to continue. About three seconds later, it hit the bus. Now, it was only going two miles an hour. The bus was going about 15 miles an hour. Uh, what's but this is a classic human being thing, right? You you, you, you expect to it to let right, you, you in. You try to move, and you're like, dude, why are you not letting me in? You don't you? Obviously. I don't know what you do in Canada, but, right. but don't you just kind of start to edge in and just yeah. say, you're going to have to, he's going to have to stop. Right. And so you expect the other person to look at what yeah, you're doing and right. then decide. So, for whatever reason, the Google bus. Or the bus decided. Uh, 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 you look like a funny view. Maybe the bus well, looked at it and said, hey, you got LiDAR. You don't, uh, <laughs> I don't need to let you in. Well, that's the other thing. I mean, so there's a, there's a post I put in from Autoblog from September saying Google had, was trying to make the self-driving cars more aggressive because <laughs> other drivers were confused by how they behaved on the road because they were too timid. Right. Too timid. Um, now, my suspicion is that any Mountain View bus driver has seen these things for years <laughs> and knows that they'll get out of his way. Because exactly. that's how they have been. They have been very rule-following. Uh, and so he, the bus driver was like, oh, it's one of those things. Well, I can carry on through because they, they always get out of my way. Um, and, you know... The, but it didn't. So, but it didn't um, because they made them a little bit more aggressive because they were trying to make it drive more like a human. But I suspect the other thing is they probably haven't, realized, haven't thought through this whole how big is the thing I'm trying to cut off problem. Mm -hmm. Which is that if it's a bus, if it's a truck, you don't play <laughs> don't, that game. No, exactly. Yeah, humans um, do that. Which is it's what human beings do, right? Humans, no. You if don't get in front of a bus. Trailer. Those guys are nuts. They don't care. Right. But also, it's a matter of physics. Don't it's like that it. thing cannot stop pretty easily. Right. It, you know, there, was this, there was this whole it was. It, you know, it wasn't just a bus. It was an articulated bus. Ones with the joints in the middle. Uh, okay. It was yeah, a big those, bus. Those are big. Yeah. It hit it, by yeah. the way. It hit it right in the joint. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I originally thought this was like one of the little tiny Google things, which would I would yeah. totally understand the bus like trying mm -hmm. to cut that off. That was a Lexus. Um, I didn't realize it was the, the medium sized Lexus one. But the point is that I, is, this you know, makes perfect sense. What you just said, Kevin, now explains the whole thing. You're the first to explain this because uh, there's nothing worse than getting to like in California, we have these things called four way stops. Yep. And it's got arcane rules about what happens at a four-way stop. First yeah. person, it's straightforward. If, if people arrive in order, the first person gets there, gets to go. But if people arrive simultaneously, you have to defer to the person on your right, and it's a weird situation. Yeah. And the most annoying thing that can happen is some guy sitting there whose turn it is going, no, 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 you yeah. go. Yeah, right. Yeah. You go. That's like, no, follow the you're, freaking you're rules. Not, right, you're not yes. playing the rules. Which is what rules. I do. You're breaking I'm, the you system know, by being, and, yeah. quote, polite. Yeah. Oh, no, you go. No! But I, find it I find it fascinating that Google is trying to find the right sort of algorithm for aggressiveness. Isn't it interesting? So you, so you need to be a little bit aggressive, right? right? Because otherwise you start causing problems. But, but the other challenge is the four-way stop thing is what you do is you make eye contact. Right. Uh, and if you're self-driving uh, right. right. you can't look at them, you can't see if they've seen you. So you're relying right. on are they moving or not? And they, they had another case they talked about a while back, which was... Um, somebody was on a fixie bike, and so on a fixie bike, you're you not stationary no to stop. You, you're, right. you're jiggling back and forth. Yeah. So he was yeah. jiggling back and forth, waiting for the car to go, and the car was the car was yeah. seeing him jiggling back and forth, saying, "Oh, he's going! Oh, he's going!" <laughs> and <laughs> it, it was like an impasse until, until That's the thing the guy on the bike said, "Fucking nonverbal cues, right?" Like, so if you're looking over yeah. your shoulder and you want, like, I would have looked at the bus, and you'd be like, you know, like, could you? And then the bus driver would look at you and. 
you would get the sense that he was the kind of bus driver who did not want to let you in. And then in a split second, you would kind of come to an agreement. Here's what How Brad. Here's what Brad Templeton wrote. I love Brad. Uh, Usenet pioneer, now in, very big into autonomous vehicles. He has a, a blog, Brad's Ideas, at f the ideas.forbrad.com, number four. He writes, um, so why is this a good thing? Well, because Google's starting to work on problems like these, and you need to solve these problems to drive even in orderly like places like California. He talks about India, where there's the lane lines are purely a suggestion, and yeah, nobody right. pays any attention yeah. Yeah. whatsoever. So he says to solve this problem, we have to, we have to solve, come up with a resolution um, yeah. get the get the computer to do the right thing. He says, in this case, Google says it learned that big vehicles are much less likely to yield. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he it's also says, lesson. it sounds like the vehicle's confusion of the sandbags probably made the bus driver decide the vehicle was stuck, mm. right? Oh, he can't move. Um, nobody yeah. wants accidents. Some will play this accident as more than it is, but neither do we want so much caution that we never learn these lessons. Right. It's also a good reminder that Google, even though it's a clear leader in this space, still has lots of work to do. It's worth noting and this is what you brought up, Kevin, that sometimes humans solve this problem by making eye contact mm -hmm. to know, well, did he see me? Turns out robots can do that because the human eye flashes brightly in the red and infrared when looking at you. That's why you have red eye with a flash camera. But you can't detect, well... It, so you can know if he sees you. Right, but it's another whole kind of. level to detect intent. Yes, right? he it, says and that. And if you've driven anywhere yes. in, like, in India or China or lots of places <laughs> where traffic rules are just... A suggestion you, you you govern yourself a lot by what, what right. the person how are they looking right do they look aggressive right so now the yes. computer has to determine does the wow. bus driver look aggressive what a challenge right. well that's, that's the, so the pedestrian crossing thing in in ireland um if you make eye contact with the driver then the driver says well you see me so i can go um, whereas in California, if you make eye contact with the driver, you're saying you, you're basically saying I want to go, and so that that can cause a cultural collision as well. It, it's, it's a different sense of of, of how you behave in those circumstances. When we moved to Edmonton, Alberta, um, they, we were from Toronto, where for Canadians people are aggressive, <laughs> not like in lots of other places, but for Canadians. And so then we moved to Edmonton. If you even move towards, if you're walking move towards a roadway, cars will stop. Even when there's no crosswalk, because they assume, oh, you're indicating a desire to cross. In Toronto, you just have to you have dodge to your way around yeah. the cars. But they <laughs> yes. literally stop. And then you have yes. to be like, no, I actually changed my mind. I, I don't want to cross the road. You go ahead. Yeah. And that's and you know if you if you look at the the visualizations they post for the Google thing, they draw little boxes around the pedestrians and the and the and the cyclists mm -hmm. to decide where they're going to go, and then they don't cross those boxes, um, and so they they are trying to work out if someone's trying to step off the curb right. or not all the time, right. and it's you know and that's different. <laughs> that's different. Like <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason, looking at a picture of Market Street in the uh, early nineteenth. 20th well, century. Actually, if you look back... Oh, he's running in front of the streetcar. No, yeah. watch out. Here it comes. <laughs> if look you at, look back look at, at when cars <laughs> when cars first started driving, it was chaos. Yeah. There were, there is were that no what this rules. is? This is... A, this is okay, this so. is video too. film mean, of a car, of, of the early cars on the market street trying to navigate their around our streetcars, around horse-drawn carriages, and, of course, pedestrians who yes. just don't know what to do with this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, there were games you know, people the, would play trying to rush in front of cars. And they had the cable car, you know it's not going to turn. <laughs> yeah. Where'd you get that video, Jason Cleanthus? That's a great That's video. Right. Uh, just on YouTube. It's uh, it's from Market Street uh, 100 years ago. Yeah. Go it's back just, 100 years. When, so, yeah, 1916, cars were very, very new. There were a few. And how there people reacted huge, was fascinating. There, there was a what? huge legislative thing with uh, jaywalking. And, in fact, the car industry, as, as far as I've been able to gather was actually pushing legislators to make jaywalking a crime because they didn't want cars to, to hit people, obviously. That's bad marketing. Um, so jaywalking, there were people who were publicly defending the right of people to just cross roads whenever they wanted. And eventually, obviously, this all got sorted out, presumably by people getting run over. Yeah. It has a remarkably uh, salubrious effect on the body politic. <laughs> but, you know, Brad's right about but the way I mean... you learn. Even people learn by having accidents. I've got three girls now who all drive, 
they've all had fender benders. They've all had sort of, yeah. you know, not big accidents, but yeah. things where they made an assumption, someone else made an assumption. It's true. You it, have to to learn some that. extent, that's how you learn. Yeah. But the, th the other thing is that you build a mental model of how cars behave. So if you're used to cars yielding for you, um, right. then you can be messed up by something that can't stop. No, um, so exactly. the, the classic thing here is trains. Um, people's intuitions about how cars and even buses behave are based on the fact that they, they can actually stop. Whereas a yeah. train cannot stop. Um, if you're trying to cross the Caltrain tracks, um, the train cannot stop if it sees you. It, it takes it half a mile to stop. And yeah. so it, cannot, it can't adjust itself to what you're doing. Um, and there was a classic thing that they discovered where they were, um, where they had railway lines and roads that crossed them at a level crossing. Um, and they thought, oh, I know, we'll cut down the trees in between the two so that the cars be able to see the trains coming. Um, and that way they'll, they'll, they'll stop and they won't try and get across. And what they found was if people could see they the trains, they think, oh, I can make that. I can make I that. Can make and they kept getting hit by the trains. I can make it. So they, so they, put, they put the trees back up so you couldn't see the, the train and then people were more cautious. So the, because the problem is your intuition, your intuition comes from other cars and other exactly. cars do act, can actually slow the down. The train's going 300 miles an hour. Yeah. Oh, my Well, no, it's, you know, not, not in America. Oh, you know, if he's doing 50 miles an hour, you're lucky. Um, maybe 70 if, you've, if, 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 if the track's heavy. And I suppose the other thing is that if you see a train coming, you may be stuck there for half an hour as the damn freight goes past. Yeah. So that, the other reason you try and get across in front right. of it. But, um, but, you know, people's intuitions are wrong about these things because they've built them in one space and they try and apply them in the other. There, there was this whole thing. There was this whole big like, thing some middle of last year where there, people kept saying, making like trolley thought experiment things, you know, the, the trolley problem of do you tr divert the trolley to hit one person rather than five and all that thought experiment oh, yeah, things. Yeah. Um, and then they were saying, should your self-driving car drive you right. off the bridge to stop right. you hitting the school bus? And I'm like, have you guys seen a school bus? <laughs> if a school bus hits your car, you're dead. The yeah. school bus is fine. You know, you, if you look up school bus car crash, what you see is destroyed cars and very large school buses that are completely fine because they weigh 15 tons um, and they can resist impact. You know, they, they don't have seatbelts in them because they can't stop that quickly. Um, and that's, that was the reason they built them like that. You know, they, they actually understood physics there. And this is, this is the same, you know, this is an example of the same thing. It's like there is a big piece of physics here, which is that thing is a large piece of metal that is moving faster than you and right. you should get yeah, out of its way. And you, if, you, if you haven't actually factored that into your model, if you don't actually have an understanding of, of how different things on the road can accelerate and decelerate, you're going to get it wrong. So I suspect that's the piece that they're going to have to go back and build into this. But, but the part that interests me more is how these robot cars and, and AI in general are going to build a sort of model of predictable human behavior based on facial gestures or, or <laughs> fing, finger gestures or... You know how how are they going to use kind of nonverbal cues and other things to determine right. the things that we naturally determine without even realizing it, probably. Right. So that's yeah. If, if, if the stuff we got on the screen that they show them they they have an understanding and a projection of the vectors of the the existing cars and how they're moving, um, and and that and they, they project those forward and they and they they understand where there's a space that makes sense and where there isn't yeah. and they 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 can cope with. Um, you know, there, there's, 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 they've got a compilation of weird random stuff we've seen on the road in Mountain View, like people yeah. driving the wrong way down the lane. Because um, <laughs> there, there are some bits of Mountain that View happens. where you've got these, these six-lane roads and you take the wrong junction and suddenly you're driving the wrong way down the road and they've got you know, motion capture of this and they're like, okay, I will get out of the way of that thing until it comes the other way. Um, yeah, so you're, you're seeing it here. So they, they, they draw boxes around everything else on the road and they draw these little fence things you can see there are then projecting somebody might cross here. Wow, um, look at that. And so they don't, they don't walk through those fences. That's, that's their example of when to stop. And when they come to a junction, they decide, am, am I safe to go or not, based on uh, are, these, are these, 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 these things here or not? And the challenge is, what... yeah, you know, there, there are times, you know, Mountain View is a relatively easy place to navigate. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's got wide roads, they've got wide lanes. There aren't that many pedestrians or cyclists except in a few little bits of it. Um, whereas if you try to navigate through Boston or London or you know, Bombay or something, you would have to train it completely differently. And this is right. part of the problem they have. The, you know, the other problem they have is they, Mountain View has a very lovely climate, like, like I'm sitting mm -hmm. here. Exactly. Um, 
these cars have not seen much rain. They've never seen any snow. <laughs> or right. may, they may have seen a little bit of snow because sometimes they've taken them to Tahoe or something, but it's not it's not part of their you know learned environment much. And they, they've so got a big problem. Probably, you could probably wipe out a quarter or more of the population of San Francisco simply by having a little snow. 